Welcome to part 17, the final part of The Legend of Spud Murphy. The part where we find out what happens to Will now that Spud Murphy has discovered what he has done. So you remember, Spud Murphy told Will to go over to the desk and Will is very worried. He thinks he's going to get spudded and this would be the end of his time as a cute kid. From here on, he would be known as Weird Will, the spud-faced kid. Do you think that's what's going to happen? Is that what your prediction was? Let's find out. My ears kept right on working, supplying noises for my imagination to add pictures to. Behind me, Marty was still making tsk, tsk and sounds of disgust, as though I had let him down. Oh, that Marty, he is a what's-it, isn't he? Oh, he's the one who put poor Will up to all of this. In front of me, I heard Spud rooting around in her desk drawer. She was probably loading the Spud gun, picking a really hard potato. Open your eyes, she ordered. No, I moaned. I can't. Come on, William Woodman. Look at what I've got for you. I took a deep breath and opened my eyes. Instead of the barrel of a Spud gun... There was a blue card in front of my eyes. Behind the card was Spud's face. She was smiling and her teeth didn't remind me of icicles anymore. They looked friendly. A blue library card, she said. Blue means adult. Blue means you can go anywhere you want in the library. All I ask is that you show me any adult books you pick so I can check if they're suitable for you. I was amazed. Could Spud... Oh, I think I've skipped a bit. Be rewarding me for breaking the rules? Well, well, why? I stammered. Spud smiled again. It quite suited her face. Because you left the carpet for a book, not to cause mischief. Books are what this library is for. Sometimes even I forget that. Wow! I had done something good by accident. Wait till Mum heard about this. Spud winked at me. Maybe it's time I expanded the children's section and got rid of the carpet. I thought about it. Maybe you could leave the carpet where it is, but just as somewhere to sit. Spud put out her hand. It's a deal. I shook her bony hand, winking and handshaking. Maybe aliens had abducted the librarian and left this spud-shaped robot in her place. Mrs Murphy, seeing as we're so friendly now, would it be okay if I called you Spud? The librarian put her free hand under the desk. She twisted something and whatever it was, oh sorry, and whatever she had under there began to hiss gently. Just try it once, Woodman, and see what happens. I backed away slowly. Maybe I'll just wait for Mum on the carpet. Good idea. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surely after Marty's terrible behaviour, I would stay well out of his reach. Well, you're nearly right. I did stay out of his reach, about 15 centimetres out of his reach. I stood a metre off the carpet and waved the blue adult card at him. Remember, Will doesn't have a blue card, so Will has got to stick by the rules of staying on the carpet. Get me a book, he begged. After that action man trick you pulled, forget it. Come on, you can breathe the bedroom air. OK, I said, and brought him Roses in Autumn from the Romance section. Not this one, he cried, reading the back cover. I don't want a book about someone called Penelope. I was already halfway up the adventure section. I cupped one hand round my ear as though I couldn't hear him, and he didn't dare shout. When I glanced Marty's way a few minutes later... He was 20 pages into the romantic novel. 
romantic novel is all about people falling in love. Do you think that's what Marty wants to read about? I'm guessing it's not. At ten past four, a horn beeped three times outside. One long beep, two short beeps. Our signal. Mum was waiting. We quickly chose a book to take home. Marty was borrowing Roses in Autumn. Oh, that sounds like Marty's got quite into his romantic book after all. There's a lot of sword fighting, he said, as sta Spud stamped the book. Spud stamped my book too, slipping my blue library card into a little envelope. You know, Will, now that we're so friendly, maybe you could call me Angela. I tucked my book under one arm. See you Wednesday, Angela, I said. Spud smiled. See you Wednesday, Will. And she did. Look, she's even waving goodbye in her new friendly way. So what did you think of that story? That is my question for you. I want you to tell me what you thought about the story. Did you enjoy the story? Why? Why did you enjoy the story? Or why didn't you enjoy the story? That's the first question. So, of course, I want a full sentence answer. So I'm going to let you sort out how you think your answer could begin, because I think you can do that by now. You're very clever and you've had a quite a lot of practice. My question is, what did you think about the story? And I want your reasons. I want you to explain why you think that. My second question is, how many gold stars out of five would you give The Legend of Spud Murphy? Would you give it one out of five? Say it's not all that good. Three out of five? Say it's okay, but you've read better. Five out of five? Think it's brilliant? I look forward to finding out what you give it. Bye for now.